Surprise, mother... It was at this moment that he knew he f Hey, welcome back Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. The first season of House of the Dragon has just ended and it delivered on so many great things. And it gave us so many dragons. 11 dragons have appeared in season one. Some are big, some are tiny, and some are freaking gigantic. Now the show is extremely well made. However, with so many dragons and riders, it's really hard to keep track of who's who and which Targaryen rides what dragon. So to make things easier, we compiled a list of all the dragons that appear in season one, as well as all the dragon riders, the different sizes, and some special attributes that dragons have, including a dragon that shoots gold flame and another one that has blue flames. We will also talk about some dragons that haven't been on the show yet. Don't worry, there won't be any spoilers. We are going to review who is the biggest living dragon in Westeros. Surprise, it's not Vagar, and it's not even Beleriand. There is a massive dragon out there and its identity and story are wild. We have Cyrax, Caraxes, and Melis. Dragonstone has 13 to their four. Now, according to Ryan Condal and George R. R. Martin, we will see about 17 dragons in this show. Season one introduced some of them, and season two will give us more dragons and battles. To explain dragons, we must explain the Targaryen history since they are intertwined with one another. About 8,000 years before the events of House of the Dragon, the Valerians in Essos discover the first dragons. Essos is the continent that is across the narrow sea from Westeros. Now, according to the Valerians, the dragons were born from a ring of volcanoes called the 14 Flames, meaning 14 active volcanoes. The trader from Karth told me that dragons come from the moon. It is known. It is known. This happened shortly after the Long Night ended in Westeros. Strange coincidence, I'm sure. The Valerians mastered the secrets of commanding dragons and became the Dragon Lords. It's implied that the Valerians used magic and blood to create a bond with the dragons. With this power, they built the greatest empire in the world, ruling the majority of the continent of Essos. But despite the Valerian Empire's power, nothing could save them from the doom. And one day, the entire land just blew up, likely due to all the 14 volcanoes erupting at once. Bada boom. Big. Big. Yeah, big bada boom. This cataclysmic event is known as the Doom of Valyria. All the Valyrians and their dragons burned, and an entire empire was gone in an instant. Only two Valyrian houses survived the Doom, the Targaryens and the Valerians. With their naval prowess, House Valerion arrived in Westeros even before the Targaryens. But the Targaryens arrived with dragons. Twelve years before the Doom, Denise Targaryen foresaw the Doom in her dreams. Those Targaryens sure do love their prophecies. And just as Danis foresaw the end of Valyria, Aegon foresaw the end of the world of men. He's the prince that was promised. Oh, forgive me, my lady, I thought that was Stannis. So with this vision, Denise's father, Aenar, uprooted the house and a few dragons to the island of Dragonstone in Westeros. A hundred years later, Aegon Targaryen conquered Westeros with his sister wives. Aegon rode Beleriand, the oldest and biggest dragon in the world. Visenya rode Vhagar, and Rhaenys rode Meraxxus. With their dragons, they created the Targaryen dynasty that ruled the Seven Kingdoms for almost 300 years. House of the Dragon takes place at the height of the Targaryen dynasty, about 130 years after Aegon's conquest. So without going into spoilers, the future seasons of House of the Dragon will be about the Targaryen Civil War, known as the Dance of the Dragons. Dance of Dragons? Why is that a dance? A conflict which will result in the death of the majority of dragons. This is why there are no dragons by the time we get to the events of Game of Thrones, until Daenerys' three dragon eggs hatched. Now this brings us to all the dragons that appear in the first season of House of the Dragon. Let's start with the first dragon we see in the show, Syrax, Rhaenyra Targaryen's yellow-scaled she-dragon. Through Syrax, we see a lot of firsts in the dragon culture and lore. We see the dragon pit and the dragon keepers, who train and oversee the dragons. Remember, Daenerys was kind of winging it with her dragons. According to the book, Rhaenyra bonded with Syrax when she was seven years old, and she named Syrax after a goddess of old Valyria. Rhaenyra is the first dragon rider to claim Syrax. Now this is important. The Targaryens place dragon eggs in their children's cribs. If those eggs hatch, and those children will bond with those dragons. But not all dragon eggs hatch, which is why some Targaryens must claim older dragons. Syrax also introduces us to the Targaryen custom of burning their dead with dragon fire. Dracarys. And Daenerys modified this custom a little, burning the dead while they were still alive. Dracarys. In the second episode, we saw that dragons are basically a nuclear deterrent in Westeros. Dragons are extremely protective of their riders. They are very hard to kill, so they can burn whole cities long before they go down. Well, unless there's an iron fleet that somebody forgot about. Well, Danny kind of forgot about 
the Iron Fleet and Euron's forces. According to the book, when Rhaenyra was younger, she used to race her uncle Daemon on Dragonback. Dragon racing sounds so awesome. Why are the Targaryens wasting their time and awesomeness on some stupid horse jousting? They got dragons. They should be doing dragon races, dragon jousting, dragon fighting. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Cyrax has grown over the years, so she's around the same size as Melisse. The growth of the dragons is dependent on many factors. It's not just their age that matters, it's also their genes and their freedom. For example, Vagar, who's considered to be the biggest and oldest dragon alive, is actually smaller than Meraxus, who was already massive at a young age. Now just imagine how gigantic Valerion was. Also keep in mind that the dragons that roam freely tend to grow much larger. Most dragons in this era were kept in dragon pits, which prevented them from growing as large as they could have. This is why Drogon grew so massive in such a short period. And to answer your question, Drogon is much bigger than Cyrax. Since we started with Rhaenyra's dragon, let's keep it with the Dragons of the Blacks. So next up is the coolest looking dragon in the series, and that's Caraxus, Daemon Targaryen's lean and mean dragon. Caraxus is known as the Blood Worm due to his red scales and long neck. Now Caraxus is one of the most unique looking dragons. He possesses a serpentine-like body with a slim, lengthy neck and torso. He also has membrane wings on his legs and a forked tail. On top of being so different looking, Caraxus has a distinct roar, sounding like a monstrous wail. <laughs> Damon's dragon is also one of the bigger dragons in the show, yet he's still only half the size of Vagar. Damon and Caraxus are experienced in battle, though the Blood Worm has seen action long before Damon unleashed him on the Stepstones. Caraxus' first rider was Aemon Targaryen, who fought in the Fourth Dornish War, which happens about 20 years before the events of the show, meaning that Damon is Caraxus' second rider. Aemon Targaryen was Rhaenys' father, who's a formidable dragon rider in her own right. Rhaenys rides the she-dragon Melisse. Her scarlet scales have earned her the title of the Red Queen, fitting to the queen who never was. Now, Melisse was once considered to be the fastest dragon in Westeros. Now, while Melisse is an older dragon at this point in the show, episode 9 proves that she's still formidable and swift. Rhaenys is the second rider to claim Melisse. The first was Alyssa Targaryen, who is actually the mother of Viserys and Daemon, which is an interesting turn of events because Rhaenys' father claimed Caraxus first. About 20 years before Rhaenys almost became queen, she claimed Melisse after Alyssa died in childbirth. Now, a lot of Targaryen women die that way. You think all that incest has something to do with it? What makes you think that? House Valerion came from Old Valeria, just like the Targaryens. However, they were never dragon riders. Only those with Targaryen blood get to claim dragons. This is why Corlys Valerion has no dragon, but his marriage to Rhaenys assured that their children would be dragon riders. Now, Lena died too soon, but in her short life, she claimed the biggest dragon alive, Vagar who is also known as the Queen of All Dragons. Although the show doesn't explain how Lena managed to claim this mighty beast or even how she found her. Do you know where Vega is now? Uh, the Dragon Keepers believe she made home somewhere on the coast of the Narrow Sea. Vagar has a long history, longer than most, so let's go back to Vagar a little bit later and finish with the other dragons in this side of the family. We didn't see much of Laenor Valerion's dragon who's called Sea Smoke, but the pale silver dragon sure made his mark during the Stepstone battle. Sea Smoke had no previous riders bonding with Laenor at a young age. Sea Smoke still resides on Drithmar. It's unknown if Sea Smoke can ever be claimed by another rider, considering his current rider is still among the living. Due to the magical bond between a dragon and its rider, it's possible that Sea Smoke is somehow aware that Laenor is alive. We did see Drogon conveniently appear whenever Daenerys needed him, though it is possible that one of Rhaenyra's younger children might claim the Silver Dragon. And speaking of Rhaenyra's children, her sons are strong dragon riders. See what we did there? Strong. Jaceris rides Vermax, and they bonded at a young age. As custom, Vermax's egg was placed in Jacaris's crib. Now, many at court suspected that Jacaris is the bastard of Harwin Strong, and there was doubt that this dragon egg would even hatch. And yet, Vermax hatched and bonded with Jacaris. Now, all of this suspicion is clearly wrong. Just look at this kid. He's a spitting image of his dad. You look exactly alike. Vermax is the first young dragon that we see in House of the Dragon. Of course, we saw dragons growing up in Game of Thrones. But with Vermax's introduction, we see how the Targaryens train their dragons. Hey. Lucerus, R.I.P., rode Arax, also R.I.P. Like his older brother, Luke bonded with his dragon at a young age, as Arax's egg was placed in his crib. Now, we didn't see Arax till the final episode of the season, and it's his one and only appearance. Through Arax, we see for the first time how dragons kill each other. This scene also reminds us that dragons cannot be truly tamed. The idea that we control the dragons is an illusion. 
Arax was in flight or fight mode, and he attacked Vagar against his rider's commands. Once that happened, all bets were off, and Vagar ripped the tiny dragon and his rider to pieces. There's always a bigger fish. But don't worry, we are getting to Vagar soon. Let's just finish up with this side of the family. Episode 10 reveals that Rhaenyra's third son, Joffrey, has also claimed a dragon who's called Tyraxis. Your sons have Veermax, Arax, and Tyraxes. Like his older brothers, Tyraxis' dragon egg was placed in Joffrey's crib. Tyraxis should be slightly smaller than Vermax and Arax. Bela Targaryen, Daemon and Lena's eldest daughter, rides Moondancer. Though we've yet to see her, Moondancer's egg was placed in Bela's crib. Thus, she claimed her at a young age. She's a swift dragon with pale green scales. Unlike her older sister, Reyna is still dragonless. A dragon egg was placed in her crib, but it never hatched. The greens have dragons. They have three adults, by my count. And now let's get to the greener side of the family. King Aegon II rides Sunfire, also known as Sunfire the Golden because of his golden and shining scales. Sunfire is considered to be the most beautiful dragon that ever lived. According to the book, even his flames are golden. All the dragons we saw so far breathe regular fire, so golden fire, very unique. He's considered to be a young dragon. I bet Viserys chose Sunfire as his son's dragon on purpose. Sunfire is a dragon totally fit for a king. But who are we kidding, man? That golden dragon is totally wasted on Aegon. Even a pig was too good for that D-bag. Why? What is it today? <laughs> Sunfire's appearance is similar to Cyrax. It's as if fate has given the two contenders to the Iron Throne similar dragons on purpose. Unlike her husband bro, Helena had to claim an older dragon, Dreamfire. She has silver scales and blue wings. We get our first glimpse of Dreamfire in the Dragon Pit in Episode 6. Dreamfire hatched during the reign of Aegon I, and she was claimed by Reyna Targaryen, Aegon's first grandchild. After Reyna's death, Dreamfire remained dragonless until Helena claimed her. Now, it's unclear how big Dreamfire is in this show. She's about 100 years old, but she was kept in the Dragon Pit for many years. Finally, let's talk about the biggest dragon in the show, one of the oldest dragons alive, the Slayer of Lucerus and Arax, the Queen of Dragons, Vagar. Some would say too large for our world. Vagar is huge, and she has a long history being one of the dragons who helped to conquer Westeros. Vagar hatched on Dragonstone after the Doom of Valyria along with Meraxus. Vagar was claimed by Visenya and Meraxus by Rhaenys. Along with Aegon's Beleriand, they conquered Westeros. Now, Beleriand died of old age, while Meraxus died fighting in a battle in Dorne, making Vagar the oldest dragon alive. That girl's still kicking strong, and she saw lots of battles in her long life. After Aegon's conquest, Vagar and Visenya fought in the first Targaryen Civil War a short-lived war that was started by Visenya and her son, Maegor the Cruel. The Queen of Dragons also took part in most of the Dornish Wars, and now she will play a huge factor in the Dance of Dragons. All of these battles allowed Vagar to grow nearly as large as Beleriand, becoming the biggest living dragon alive. But there's a dragon out there that's even bigger than the Black Dread, and we'll get to that gigantic dragon very soon. Following Visenya's death, Vagar remained riderless until Balon Targaryen claimed her. That's the father of Viserys and Daemon. Balon the Brave. Rider of Vagar, heir to the Iron Throne, dead of a burst belly. During that time, Vagar teamed up with Caraxes as they burned the Dornish fleet during the Fourth Dornish War. After Balon's death, Vagar was without a rider once again till she was claimed by Lena, who was the first peaceful and kind rider that she ever had. But then she was claimed by Aemond, who's anything but peaceful and kind. And so while the Greens don't have as many dragons in their ranks, Vagar makes up for it in size and experience. The Greens actually have a fourth dragon, and that's the aptly named Blue Queen. Tessarion is a young blue she-dragon that belongs to Daron Targaryen. That's the fourth and youngest son of Viserys and Alicent. And Daron hasn't appeared in the show yet, but George R. R. Martin confirmed that he exists in the show and likely will be introduced in season two. Daron is likely in Old Town at this point, serving as a war to Lord Hobart Hightower. What's so cool about Tessarion is that she breathes blue flames, which proves that you don't need to be a zombie dragon to shoot blue fire. And as Avatar The Last Airbender taught us, blue flames are the coolest flames in the world. Goodbye, Zuko. So that's the dragons the Greens have. Now let's talk about some dragons who don't have riders. We are introduced to Vermithor in the 10th episode. This massive dragon belonged to King Jaehaerys Targaryen. That's the old king we see in the prologue, and his decision to name Viserys as the new king led to the Targaryen conflict, which is now snowballing into a full-blown civil war. Vermithor was nicknamed the Bronze Fury due to his large size and bronze scales. Other than Vagar and that other mystery dragon we mentioned, Vermithor is the oldest and biggest living dragon in the show, and his main and likely only rider was Jaehaerys. Vermithor took part in the Fourth Dornish War, so he has battle experience. And, as Vagar proves, being an old dragon doesn't mean much. Size and experience are what matters. 
Following Jaehaerys' death, Vermithor remained riderless for decades, but that could change in the second season. There are also unclaimed dragons. Vermithor and Silverwing dwell on the Dragon Mound. In the final episode, Daemon mentions Silverwing. She's a silver dragon that belonged to Alysanne Targaryen, the wife of Jaehaerys Targaryen. Silverwing hatched around 100 years before the events of the show. Now, Silverwing and Vermithor like to coil together, which is basically like dragon spooning. Did you pull a knife on me in the night? Fitting since their riders were married, and unlike others in their family, they actually loved each other. Silverwing was considered to be a friendly dragon. Ever since Alysanne's death, about 40 years before Rhaenyra was crowned queen, Silverwing remained riderless. Now we need to talk about one of the biggest dragons that ever lived, and one of the dragons that helped conquer Westeros and create the Targaryen dynasty, Valerion the Black Dread. While he's already dead when the show begins, his massive glittering onyx skull adorns his shrines, a memory of the mighty dragon that reshaped Westeros. Valerion has a long history, going all the way back to the Valerian Empire. He is one of the five dragons that Aenar Targaryen brought to Dragonstone when he fled Old Valyria before the Doom. The other dragons died, making Valerion the only living dragon that lived before the Doom of Valyria. Valerion was claimed by Aegon Targaryen and the rest is history. Aegon Targaryen changed the rules. That's why every child alive still knows his name, 300 years after his death. Now, one of the most notable moments for Beleriand was the burning of Harrenhal, the greatest castle in Westeros at the time. Also, Beleriand, Vagar, and Meraxas destroyed one of the biggest armies in the history during the Field of Fire battle. After Aegon's death, the Black Dread was claimed by Maegor the Cruel, one of Aegon's sons. Daemon would be a second Maegor, or worse, now, as the name suggests, Magor was a really nasty fella. He and his mother Visenya started a short civil war. Magor used Beleriand to burn a lot of people, including some old houses and the Faith Militant. Now, during the battle beneath the God's Eye, Magor rode Beleriand into battle, killing his nephew Aegon and his dragon Quicksilver, marking the first dragon-on-dragon -dragon violence in Westeros. I really hope HBO adapts this story at some point. It doesn't need to be like a full show, but maybe they can make a movie or a special. After Magor's death, Beleriand was claimed by Aera Targaryen, the daughter of Reyna who rode Dreamfire. But it didn't go well. Aera wasn't able to control the Black Dread Beleriand, and the dragon flew off with her, disappearing for a year. Once they returned, Aera came back very sick, and she died soon after. Beleriand himself was severely injured. It's presumed that Beleriand flew to Valyria, which wasn't a hospitable place at that time, you know, what with the doom and all that. Following this incident, Beleriand was considered to be way too old, but you can't old yell or a dragon, so Beleriand was the first dragon to be put in the dragon pit, indicating the beginning of the end of the dragon age. Since then, Beleriand was kept under guard until he was claimed by Viserys Targaryen. You Beleriand's lost rider. Only for a short time. But Beleriand was too old and slow by that point, and Viserys rode him only once before the dragon never flew again. Shortly after, he died. Now, in case you were wondering why Viserys had no dragon, that's why. But my theory is that Viserys simply preferred his Lego set, and he wasn't into dragons. Valerion was huge, but he wasn't the biggest, with the confirmation that we will see the wild dragons. Then there are the three wild dragons, all of whom nest here. This means that we will get to witness the biggest dragon alive, a mighty beast known only as the Cannibal. This black-scaled monster is a wild dragon, meaning a dragon that wasn't trained and never had a rider. Anyone who attempted to claim him didn't live to tell the tale. The cannibal is the biggest living dragon in the books. He's bigger than Vagar and even Balerion. So it's big. What's so fascinating about the cannibal is that he grew so massive because he ate other dragons, hence the name. Ew, you feed your dragons dragons? He fed on dead dragons, on smaller dragons, and on dragon eggs. The cannibal's massive size can also be attributed to its free and wild nature. Remember that in this era, the Targaryens can find their dragons in dragon pits, and this likely resulted in the dragons being unable to grow as large as they could have. The cannibal lived on the island of Dragonstone. Now, how the cannibal came to be on Dragonstone is a mystery. There are those who believe that the cannibal already made the island as lair long before the Targaryens came to Westeros. If that's true, then the cannibal isn't just older and bigger than Beleriand. He has far exceeded the presumed maximum lifespan of dragons. But there are some conflicting reports that claim that the cannibal actually hatched early in the reign of Jaehaerys I. If that's the case, then it's insane that the cannibal grew bigger than Beleriand and Vagar in such a short period of time. Does that mean I could be the biggest dog in the world if I eat other- Nope. Nope, eating, eat, doing that's wrong. Don't do, don't even talk about doing that. But well, what about humans? They're bigger. What if I eat people? Nope, nope, eating people, also wrong, and also it will hurt your tummy, so just forget about it. It's all just made up stuff anyways, buddy. I'm hungry. 
As I was saying, the cannibal is a terrifying and fascinating beast, and I really hope that we get to see him in the show. There are two other wild dragons living on Dragonstone, and those are Sheepstealer and Grey Ghost. To avoid spoilers, we won't talk about them too much, but just a quick hint. Grey Ghost is a shy dragon that avoids people, and Sheepstealer is going to be a great addition for the show. There are other dragons that are out there, but we won't spoil who they are or who their riders are in this video. All we can say is that Season 2 is going to be epic. So that's the 11 dragons we see in the first season, as well as a few others. Now it's your turn, tell me what you think down in the comments below, or you can at me on Twitter, and if it's your first time here, please subscribe, smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.